We are presenting Hinan Hundo, Korean sword art. Based on battlefield applications of the sword, it's not a sport art. We do work with cutting completely, and the fun part at the end will be cutting mats. Remind me to pass one up. Fortunately, we have some of our other students in the audience, so I can pick on them as well today. <laughs> what you will see in the panel today is a bunch of our curriculum and some of the fun that we have otherwise. The basics we'll start with are done at the beginning of most classes, like 99% of them. We work hard, and then we have fun with the forms. You'll see the forms. The forms will be done in a couple versions by themselves and with the bad guys put in. Uh, we also have two of our black belts doing their sword dance as soon as the music's ready, which is another option in the tournaments that we do as our federation holds them. We don't compete otherwise. I don't know. Excuse me. So if all of my people are ready in the back, please come on up and we'll start with the basics. As Dave, as Dave comes running from the back of the room. Make sure I don't fall off the stage. Chibi. 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 Sangdan baby. Ana. Pussy. Yeah. Pussy. Set. Pussy. Here. Pussy. 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 Hana. So it's a sampling of the basics that we do. We have more cutting combinations. More cutting combinations and cutting angles that we work on as far as the basics. Focus is on doing proper cuts. To continue with proper cuts, Zach and Mel have a focus drill. This focus drill is a cutting base focus drill. I think focus one. Aldo. 
시작! 
So, giving her time to get over here. The next three I actually put the bad guys into that form to show the combat applications of it. And younglings always like beating up, trying to beat up the mob. So. Susan is developed hers for this year. And if the music guys are ready.
you, Susan. With the sword dances, you definitely get to see the students' personalities as they go. All of the sword dances are made up from the forms that we do, the content, or sorry, techniques that we work on. Melanie's up for the next one. Any little wiggle in the sword as it cuts will show jagged edges on the paper. Some of the test requirements are throw, throw the apple up, draw and cut it. We also have mats, which we do today, is bamboo, which we prefer. It's kind of hard to get in Minnesota. So if any of you know where we can get good bamboo, tell us. Um, Zach and Dave, we just set up the stand, please. Ben, you didn't remind me. This will make a quick trip around. This is what we're cutting. Go ahead and show them. <laughs> then go ahead and hand it over. Pass it down the lines, let them see what it's like. The mats that we have are tatami mats. They are sold under the Japanese name. They are rolled up and soaked. The soaking helps keep the straw from scratching the finish on our nice expensive swords. The density of the mat equals cutting muscle. So when you get to feel that, that's what it would be like to actually hit an arm or a leg. Bamboo equates to cutting bone. Some of the bigger, or not bigger, but some of the cutting that is done in Korea, Japan, they'll roll the mat around a bamboo stick. So you're cutting both, the bamboo and the mat. Another one on the other side. Um, It'll go fast, yeah. So, Zach's up first. Nice with my sword. Until now, the metal swords that you've seen on stage are practice swords. Unsharpened. Um, the one that Dave had is a kagam that is equal to the weight and size of the cutting sword that we use for these. The one that Mel had, the one that Susan had, are federa federation kagams. 
that we get from the official group and make them all pretty and fancy. They are not chirping. That one is. So I'm going to get out of the way. Here is 
we would never actually want to bang blades together, which you see in the movies a lot, because otherwise the fight would be over too fast and done. But every time you bang your blade together, you ding up your edge, you make it dull, spend too much time on maintenance. You can see that the size of the person doesn't matter with the cutting. It's about the quickness of the sword and the correct line of the edge. All it takes is being tilted a little bit as it's traveling up forward to mess up the actual cut line, to leave it stuck in the mat. Thank you. So, the one upside, I get to play a little bit. We'll see if I can do any better. school that's going to work with us out of Omaha, Nebraska. 
So we are all over now. We have information on the back table there, and some bribery with candy if you <laughs> take them. They already found it? Wish you got it. <laughs> so we have several, several schools that many different nights. Some of them are mine, like Brooklyn Center and I Sandy. So if you sign up in one, you go to any, either of them, get to train what you want. Yeah. Other question? Sir? Um, what is the original origin of where, you, where your school came from? Which origin do you want? The first one, based back in Korea. If there was one. If you want to play with the version that is offered as the history, it comes from the Three Kingdoms era with the Warong Warriors. That one. Pardon? That one. That one? <laughs> So as they, were, as they were dealing with Japanese invaders and Chinese invaders, they trained in the sword, and that's... Yeah. And I try to stay away from history and some of that politics side of things, because it depends on who you ask. It's all Japanese, or it's all Chinese, it was not Korean, or vice versa, or the other, so... I know it's a sword out, and it works really well. Techniques are good, forms are strong, all the work that way. So uh, that's my hesitance on why I didn't really know how to answer you. Questions over here, ma'am, yeah, sir? Um, are there any differences between swords you use and a Japanese katana? Yes. Katana and the jingo are designed differently. You have to get into the geometry of the blade. Uh, the jingos that the, we use, there's two styles. The sangato, which is a three angle sword, which means you have the two angles coming across the back and then the angle that makes the edge. Those are usually for mats and light cutting. Or a yukyato, which is a six angle, which has a little crown, then down the side, then down the angle. You got three on each side. And those are for heavy cutting. We This is a, a yukyato, a six angle. It's intended for bamboo, heavier targets in that mat. But, Modern forging, they're made similar to the katanas you would buy otherwise. Uh, a typical, this is actually a Paul Chen practical katana. Does not have the blood groove. Most Korean swords do not have the blood groove. Polar. Sir? Oh, a polar. <laughs> a bohi in Korean. Anyone else? Yep. How would you defend without chipping the sword? You hide. <laughs> not going to try to put that away with the microphone in my hand again. Um, the old adage of the best, the best block is don't be there. As it's being swung at me, I'm not going to challenge it and clash against it. I'm going to change my angles, change my directions, let it miss, make it a shield, hide behind it in that manner in case it does have to get hit. And that's what part of the stuff. If we, when they did their three-person fight up here, if they had done it with the live sword, none of them would have clanked together. It would have been hide, sneak, move around, change angles, things in that manner. Could you give a short demonstration of the hiding versus uh, blocking? Um, actually, the pocket. You have your target. Sneak up over there. The question was, could you show an idea of what a hiding on it would be? So, if you imagine, so I'm not going to swing the live one at her, a big right cut coming at her, she hides, ducks down, lets the cut go over the top. She has her blade in between, just in case the angle changed on my cut, that does bounce off her sword. The maintenance that goes into them, if you later on here, you do some more, you come up and check. This sword has three dings in the blade that won't come off anymore because they've been bounced off the part of the sword stand that isn't soft. It takes a lot to work on. This sword is eight years old and it's still cutting decently, so it's been worth the investment. But 
If I have to get it ground down and filed down too much too often, then I have to buy a new blade too soon. Which, which is part of where Kendo doesn't use real blades, they use the sparring swords. They don't have to worry about it. Uh, where do you get your swords? That one's a twisted question. <laughs> My official answer is we order all of our swords from our federation. This one I ordered from a website called Mantis Swords. It's a Paul Chen practical, like I said. We've also got a couple that came from martialartsword.com. That one that I have is $1,500. This one was $350. It was eight years old and it's still cutting well. It goes through a lot of these. <laughs> Way back in the day, we did demos at the Renaissance Festival. Three demos a day, both Saturday and Sunday, four weekends out of the time that they were there, and this did all the cutting for that time. So it's done a lot, it's held up well. So it depends on what you're looking for and why. Anyone else? So if you were to start like, going to the academy, what would you work on first? What would you work on first? Basics. Basics are the core to everything. Any martial art, anything you do, what we try to focus on too, and these guys really get annoyed because I mention it regularly. Basics are like the alphabet. The focus drills are like words. Forms are like sentences. The combat, they're like paragraphs or stories. But if you don't have basics, you don't have anything to build on. Too many people want to jump up to the fancy, flashy stuff. And they don't know what they're doing. So, if you don't know what you're doing, you're doing it for the wrong reason. More? Over here, anyone? Questions? Yep. How do you handle lefties? We don't. There are no such thing as left-handed swordsmen. <laughs> now, that is a military-based piece. Everyone wears the sword on the same side. Everyone is lined up on, uh, in formation. Everyone draws the sword in the same direction. You don't have the one left-handed stabbing you as they do their draw. Just, okay. And you can see that in a lot of things. One of the other correlations I use, why do you get on the left side of a horse? As my sword's on this side, why lift my sword over the horse? The horse doesn't care. So you do it for formation for specific purposes that are beyond right-handed, left-handed. Since the majority of the population is right-handed, that's what gets stuck with. Yes, I have several left-handed students who swing swords right-handed, they're just fun. Anyone else? No? Questions are all good? Feel free to come on up. Hmm? Where? Wait, wait, way back there. Um, I'm just curious. Uh, as a teacher yourself, I don't know a lot of Asian cultures practice a certain respect for the sword, where you're not supposed to look at it when you shoot it. Do you practice that, or is that only for more specific kinds of teachers? I'm just curious. Uh, it's an interesting question on it. If you're looking at your sword, you're not looking at your bad guy. So if we do that, and if you have to look at your sword to us, it only means that you haven't worked with a sword and a scouter enough. If you actually have to look down to see where your sword is going, he's going to run me through. You know, so if I can put it away while I'm still watching him, so it is not a... I can't think of a good word on it. It's not a conceptual piece for a specific reason other than don't take your eyes off your back yet. No. Anyone else way back there that I can't see with the lights? Sir? Do you ever do like two swords? <sighs> yes. Uh, one of our third dons has a two sword demo form she's developed in our curriculum. Higher level black belts actually have a set of seven two-handed, two-sword forms that they have to learn. I am quite a ways from that yet, but it'll be a lot of fun when we get there. Let's see someone else's. Is it possible that you demonstrate the dance that you have to do? Like the laundry designs 
That's the good part about the sword dance. It's completely voluntary. I can't do it. <laughs> Personality has been come up. Now, we'll throw this little piece. Both Susan and Mel are also magi magicians. Yes, they're magicians. <laughs> but they're also musicians. <laughs> and have some of that within their personality. I am a martial artist. I learned to fight and learned to use the techniques that way. I don't have that kind of play in me. In fact, I regularly hear that I don't laugh and joke and have enough fun. So, that's you know, a competition piece that's fortunately voluntarily done. Yep. Um, you said back like how for the sword dance it always like tells a story. Um, should we actually hear of like one of the stories behind like, the sword dance? You guys have your stories? Sure. <laughs> personal. They're, they're, they're both going to go personal. <laughs> now, and that is one spot since they're not competing, they are not required to turn one into me. So, that's a good question. I'm going to have to remember that and make them. They'll get off the book this season for doing the cons and the demos we do, but next year's, when they make up their new books, actually Susan said she has three or four of them in the works, so yeah, thanks. I'm going to have to remember to take a turn <laughs> sort of stories for it. All, yep, all martial arts today is about developing yourself, becoming better today than you were yesterday, because we don't walk around too often with swords anymore. Unless we come here. Yeah, unless we come here. <laughs> no fair, you have a shield also. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah, but it's all, you come right through it. If, if it was, yeah, we would be able to go through it nicely. <laughs> no. But all, all martial arts training, if you can't use it in daily life though, then you are not training well. All the challenges you put yourself through in learning a form, developing focus, discipline, control, works in academics, getting your homework done, make sure you get good notes in a lecture, working in any customer service job, disciplining yourself to act accordingly, figuring out different problem solving methods, if this cut doesn't work, I do a different cut, it works. So as I approach, I'm approached by a customer, how can I respond to them to fit whatever their problem is and help them solve the problem, not just fight with it. So it's more problem solving and development in that manner. Empty hand arts are better for personal protection, but I can find something this long out on the street a lot easier than staff. I probably will never find nunchucks on the street. <laughs> if I carry them around with me, I'm probably going to end up in more fights than I want to be because someone's going to think that I'm trying to be bad and all tough, and they're going to get, I'm going to get more challenges out of it. So this translates to a baseball bat really easily, to a golf club, things in that matter. And that's where my real idea for wanting to start the story comes from. I need tools. Having more tools helps me protect myself better. Golf clubs are really more stabbed. You only get one good shot with them before they break and you have to stab. But hit, hitting him with that, the head of that club once? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Not if you're good, you're going to just with the actual head of the club. <laughs> Not if you train. <laughs> And uh, you hit you, you get a good, good slap with nine iron, though, you're going <laughs> to... Yes, it'll work as a very good thrusting tool afterward, though. Lots of little puncture balls. Yes. Yeah. You sound like he has experience. Yes. Hmm. I have done Hmm. Did you get a picture of him? <laughs> Which is I'm kind of surprising why I didn't hear here. Why is the sword edge up? Yeah. So, with the sword edge up, I have heaven to earth drop. Nice and easy, my body reaches the whole way. If I turn it over, I have to have it such a much longer reach to get the sword to come up. 
if you see, thank you, if you see a sword worn edge down, it is probably hanging from the belt, and it would be a cavalry sword. It would not be a foot soldier sword. Because now if I have it here, and I have the whole height of the horse, I have a longer reach, I have more space, I can draw the sword better. But wearing it in the belt, kind of hard to draw it down to get it to come up. I can reach up much easier than that. So, anyone else on that idea? That's, yep. Um, is there any significance to the color of your uniforms? Uniform colors, thank you. These are demo tops. These are not worn in regular classes. And we can actually tell the differences. Dave and Dimitri have black, belt, black uniforms on. They both have colored belts. Black uniforms are for colored belts. Susan's is the old one. It's navy. But Zach and Lexi's navy showed up easier. Those are first done black belts. Mel, with the fancy all white, second done. Third done, get the picnic table pants. <laughs> And that's it. Now, the difference on it, mine, the royal top, is a master's top. So fourth down and up, get master's tops. What you can't see is underneath here, there's an animal embroidered on the chest. Depending on what rank, it starts with an eagle. I, wear, I have a tiger, and the next one up is a dragon. The president of the Federation has a phoenix on his. So we don't have ranks on our belts. You tell what rank they are, but what, what animal is on their lapel. So kind of plays with the commercialized idea of martial arts these days. Black uniforms are much cooler than a white one. So you start with the black one. Then you get made, made to wear the white one later. <laughs> This year then, if you guys have any other questions, we'll hang out over there for a bit, give these guys a chance to clean up the straw on the stage for their next panel, which is the part we always forget about. <laughs> Thank you for coming in.